starting to be heard in the Scottish referendum debate. Yeah, that's right. All the giants, BP and Shell, have spoken in favour of the union. And we've got news this morning that some banks have drawn up contingency plans in the event of a yes vote. Well, Dom is here to tell us more. Yes, thank you very much, Sally. It's fair to say business has come under the spotlight in the Scottish referendum campaign this week and how. The pound fell to 10-month lows on Monday, while shares in Scottish-based firms like Standard Life, Royal Bank of Scotland and Weir Group also took a hit. Alex Salmond says there's a lot of scaremongering. Uh, let's speak to two bosses who have differing takes on uh, next week's big question. Kevin Haig is based in West, Lo West Lothian and runs a retail website, Pet Planet and Green Finger, supports right. a no vote. And also joining us from Edinburgh is Kat Heathcote from Witherby Publishing Group, who backs independence. Kat, welcome. Can I start with you, Kat? Just tell us um, why you back independence. What's the business case as you see it? Um, if I'm looking at um, the current situation, I'm not a Scot. I, I came to Scotland 15 years ago. I'm married to a Scot, and in fact, my business is <laughs> two miles away from Kevin's. Um, I look at an economy that is well-trained, um, has a vibrant workforce, it is skilled, uh, the operating costs are reasonable, the communications where we sit in West Lothian are excellent. But that would be uh, the case, Kat, if you were part of the UK as well? Uh, I'm, I'm sure it would, but I don't see any difference as part of, the, as part of Scotland. Okay. Um, are you concerned about insurers, banks leaving, the jobs in the city behind you, Edinburgh, um, perhaps relocating to London? Is that a, is that a worry? No. No, I mean, I think what's happening at the moment is entirely understandable, and I'm only surprised it's taken until now for it to happen. Um, we're getting a certain amount of posturing. We're seeing the establishment and the old boy network starting to, to behave as it does, mm. and, and that's ex understandable. But if you look, for example, at the BP statement yesterday, and you actually look closely at it, um, and, and I speak as somebody who previously worked for BP, um, I think what you're actually seeing is the opening stance in a negotiation with the next Scottish government. So he made very clear he wanted um, a good fiscal structure. He made very clear that uh, he wanted to see uh, a, a good tax regime. I didn't actually read anything in that statement that said mm. um, that he, he really had a problem with Scotland. Okay, um, Kat, stay with us. Kevin, um, if there's a yes vote, you'll move your warehouse operations to the UK, I understand, the rest That's of the UK. That's correct. Why? What are you afraid of? Uh, I mean, it's not about fear, it's about sensible management of risk. Um, I, mean, I thought it was interesting that Kat, when you asked her to describe the opportunities that are created by independence, actually she just downplayed the risks. Uh, and for us, as businesses that trade with the rest of the UK, that's where the risk lies. So my business is, we sell to the, the domestic market of the UK at the moment, if Scotland becomes independent, 90% of our sales become export. Yeah. That's just a statement of fact. That's true, but, but that market will stay no, there. Course, the, kind of of course, the rest of the UK wouldn't the be going absolutely. anywhere. Absolutely, the market's there. I'm also involved in a business called Enduro. We export 50% of our turnover. Export isn't a problem per se, but when you start to look at questions around currency, around EU membership, around the frictional costs, around things like the universal service obligation with Royal Mail, which is important to us, around how couriers will charge us, uh, but, but critically, the currency uncertainty and the likelihood that over time, not on day one, but over time, we have to prepare for the fact that it is likely that Scotland will be in a different currency from the rest of the UK. We have to prepare for the fact that either Scotland or the rest of the UK may be outside the EU. Therefore, selling from Scotland to the rest of the UK becomes meaningfully cross-border trade. And that, incur that means there are costs associated with that. Okay, Kat. Um Say that Scotland is independent and carries on using the pound, yeah. but has little control over that currency. You're using essentially a foreign currency. Are you, would you be happy with that situation as a businesswoman? I mean, how long to bear the strength? That, that, to me, those are political questions, and I'm looking at this purely from a business point of view. I'm an 85% exporter, not to the UK. 15% of our business goes to the UK, and of that, about 85% of that then exports on through freight forwarders. Um, I, I don't have any concerns about that. My business is in around shipping and energy. You know, the oil market and the vagaries of the US dollar are probably far more of a concern to us. And in fact, last year, uh, one of the things we had to make a provision for was a massive drop in the US dollar price. It's part of doing business. Um, very quickly, very quickly, you know, it's, it's an intelligent part. Very quickly, 
Well, I mean, which is, which is completely understandable, and this is the fundamental point here. A third of employment in Scotland is in businesses that depend on trade with the rest of the UK. Cat doesn't. Absolutely. So, I, you know, fine, she's probably right for her business, but for those businesses, the third of employment in Scotland, it's a huge issue, and I can speak for that. Okay. Cat Heathcote from Edinburgh, thank you very much. Kevin Hay, running a business in Edinburgh, but with us in Salford. Thank you very much, both. Thank you. Both.